Hey guys, welcome to another Power 30. Today you're going to learn about three different topics, 10 minutes each. So let's start with Carissa. All right, go Carissa. Hi guys. So I'm excited because my topic for today is branding 101. And we did a branding, um, we did a seminar last week where we learned tons of, of stuff. Yes, please. Ooh, sugars and spices. Uh, you fixed it? Carrie. Carrie. <laughs> Carrie. Fixed what? Just talk. The mute, the muting. No, I wasn't it's okay. on the screen. It's okay. Just talk. You're on my screen. I pinned your video. Okay, ADD girl. Okay. Remember that? All right. So stay with me. All right. Let's start over. Hi guys. So I'm Carissa. So we learned about last week in um, a seminar that we did, which we have tons of notes from. And one of the things that we learned about, which was branding one-on-one, -on -one, it was something that I loved because um, it helps people with first off, knowing a tad bit more about you. Okay. And then also it helped us, um, it helped me first off with learning more about me, where it helps me with seeing myself in a different light. Um, seeing myself in somebody else's eyes. So for example, if someone goes on your, fa on your Facebook page right now, right? And they was to scroll your page, what would they see? Would they see negativity? Would they see rants? Would they see ratchetosity? Would they see, what would they see? Would it be just you complaining all up and down your timeline, up and down, up and down? Because you, if those people are around you and those are the people that you see on your timeline, then those are definitely the people that I would definitely say I don't even want on my team. Because if all day long, that's what your energy is, is to complain, 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 complain. Oh my God, somebody stepped on my toe today. Like, why did they have to do that? You know what I mean? Or, oh my gosh, my darn cat just done this. Ugh. You know, and not make it funny. Because me, I'll complain, but my complaining will be funny. And you wouldn't really understand that it was a complaint because you will laugh at it first. So. The thing that would be um, a great thing would be like um, just just finding ways of making a negative situation a positive for people to actually continue to read your stuff. Like if you have people in your timeline that you really just scroll past, you really don't even need to be friends with them because why are you friends with them? You, you There's nothing you're ever going to like. You're never going to comment. Um, I wouldn't even have them host a post for me because that means I'm bringing that energy over and now I got their friends on my friends list. So we want to show you some different things. Well, I do, not them, sorry. I want to show you some different things that I hope you guys out with um, your, your branding and being better at what you do. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions first. You know, you can give some hands up, some things like that if you want to. If not, it's fine. I'm okay with talking to myself right now. So first thing is when people go to your page, like I said, what do they see? What would be three things that people would know about you from going to your Facebook page? Well, for me, you know, it's, it's crazy, but for me, well, no, let me ask another piece of a question to that. If people were to see something somewhere else on someone else's page or some ad or anything, what would they actually, would they tag you in it? And if so, what do you think it is they would tag you in? You can even put in the comments for me, like for me, what do you guys, I'm scared to know. What would you guys know or think of for me? If you think of me and you see something, don't not too not too fast, Kalani, not too fast. Ooh, that Queen Mary under the name Kalani. Come on, you throwing me off. So if you think of, if you think of me and when you see something and think of me, what would it be that you thought of when you think of me? Put that in the comments. What would you think of when you think of me? If you seen something go past and you were like, oh my God, that remind me of Carissa. What would that be? That would be how you need to think of yourself for your for your your friends and and things like that on your social media and your followers to think of you that will be stuff that you want to think of right so for me i can tell y'all even though y'all putting stuff in the in the comments for me it's hallmark channel it's tequila and it's probably probably got something to do with my my animals maybe 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 or it works of course so 
you want to have things that you're known for, for people to be able to tell you. And it came straight to my mind when I thought of this, because I'm tagged all the time in Hallmark Channel stuff. When the new movies come out for the winter, I'm getting inboxes. When a new movie comes, when a new spring selection comes up, I'm getting inboxes. When Hallmark put out a new thing saying that they were going to pay people to watch their movies, I got inboxes and tags on that. So evidently, that means I'm really pushing Hallmark Channel for people to be sending me stuff. When a new drink come out, when I go to BBQs, I'm getting tagged and inboxed about it. So, you know, things like that. So for people to know me for those things, that's what you want to be able to have a signature on. Something to subliminally be able to put in people's mind for them to know about you. And maybe you don't even realize you just did that. So that's some branding I got for you guys. Oh, I think I hit too much all at one time. And I think that was all my notes. Oh, that was definitely not hmm, the way I planned that. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely hit all my things. So that was a branding one-on-one, not a 201 and not a 102. You know, there's going to be levels to this. So this was just a beginner's level for you guys. So just know, stay positive, be the person that you want your, that you will love your future self or your future distributor or your future potential distributor, um, interested in coming to your page. You know, I have people that's interested in coming to my page for my TikTok videos. A lot of people was like, oh my gosh, I love your videos. Oh my gosh, I come to your page for that. You know, I got to get back on them. It's been a while, but they, I was known for that too. So, you know, just, just, just be you, be you, but also make sure you put a little bit more of you out there. Just, it's not just only about the business, but also about having a personality with the business. And I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Not too fast, Sherry. I know, right? I thought it was waiting on um, Carrie because she did this. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, so I said I wanted to say this kind of sarcastically, but I, I wasn't sure how you could put that in print. So you want to be a leader. Hmm. <laughs> Have you always said that? Have Has everyone here always said that? A lot of people are like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to be a leader. And then you hear all the, about, no, look there. But there's some of you who really want it and you say, I want to, I want to be a leader. And I hear it a lot. So what does this, what does that even mean? Is it appointed? Sometimes. Is it earned? Sometimes. Is it just part of your success as you go? You evolve into it? Sometimes. And you know what? A lot of you that said no, at some point in this business, you will become a leader. Okay. And it's hard work. I'm just going to tell you, it's a lot of work, but it's rewarding because it's hard work. It's work ethics. It's dependability. It's respect, knowledge, even wisdom that comes with it. And most of us honestly are not born with that overnight. A lot of things comes with time and, and wisdom comes from experience. So a lot of this, when you say you want to be a leader, and I'll, I'll tell you, I want to be a leader. I want to be looked at as a leader. But I don't want to be just a leader. I want to be a good leader. I want to be a great leader that people feel like that they can trust me. And I don't want to ha ever have anyone look at me and go, she's all talk, no do. Because a true leader, do. You're a doer. Okay? They take action. And they find solutions to problems. Leaders will go the extra mile for their team and they'll work on self-development. They'll work on themselves just as much as they're going to try to help the team. They work on them. And they do it often. Leaders show up and they show out. They don't, you don't see leaders showing up once a month on a Zoom, okay? Leaders have to be plugged in. And I think that's one of my pet peeves when I have people on my team who say they want to be a leader and I don't see them on any Zoom. They're not there. You cannot be MIA. So <clears throat> when you want to lead and you want to, when you want to be a leader, You've got to be showing by example. You've got to set an example. And also, leaders have other things that they have to learn. And one is to know when to step back and let others lead and grow. And that's not always easy. Because part of that's like being a mom, you know, and you don't want someone to fall on their face. And so you'll, you, sometimes we hold our kids back because we're being real careful with them. So it's kind of like being a mom, which most of y'all are going to understand that, but you have to let them go and you have to let them lead and let them find their way. 
Another thing is leaders will mentor and they'll coach along the way and they need to know the difference. So you've got to know the difference. What's the difference in a coach and a mentor? For example, a mentor is a process based on relationship and it's usually over time and it's usually, honestly, it's over development. That's what mentorship is, where coaching is more short term and it's around defining a task to help strengthen people's talents or skills. And it is more performance driven, which means that honestly, mentoring is, I think about, and he doesn't know me, he's not even alive anymore, but you know, I tell a lot of people, Jim Rohn's my mentor. <laughs> he, he has mentored me so many times, he doesn't know it. And I don't have a relationship with him, but I have the deepest respect and admiration for him. But then I have other people who might, Tina, I'll use Tina, she's not on, but Tina might be my coach because maybe she'll coach me in a certain area that she feels like I need some help. So there is a difference between the two. And as leaders, we need to recognize that. Another thing we need to know the difference is vision and goals. And we need to know the difference in those. So visions are a clear image of your future, whereas a goal is to set a specific target that you're gonna to move toward to get that vision. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to read two things at once here. Leaders build leaders and are not afraid to let others lead. And I said that earlier, but honestly, that can be such an issue with people. True leaders are confident in their own abilities that they don't feel threatened when others lead. And I see that a lot, like I'll brag on Carrie, she's here, but I see that with Carrie because I see her, uh, push Tasha is a good example. Tasha is like the one who has anxiety attacks and freaks out. But every Monday night, what does she do? Yeah, she's doing, she's showing leadership, right? And so don't be afraid to let others in your group lead. And don't be afraid of other leaders who are not in your group to lead. You might learn something from them that either will help you or it will help the person that maybe they're even um, talking with. So instead of feeling threatened, just look at it as, wow, I needed that. I needed the help. Another thing that, and I used to say this is um, from a standpoint of a leader, it could be a king, it could be a president, it could be any you know, major leader, that really great leaders delegate, but they know who to trust to delegate to, right? So that's always really important too, because you can't do it all. You can't. And that's when you find out that you're really good leaders, when you can find the right people that hopefully you've mentored and coached throughout, and now you can let them have that position. And now they're gonna, it's kind of layered leadership, if you will, they're gonna develop who they are and lead. Leaders build a culture with their team, a bond and even a brand, if you will, of what the team stands for. You know, everybody knows who Team Hawaii is, everybody. Confident leaders will stand aside as new leaders find their way. So you wanna be a leader? It really does take work for the rewards, are, but the rewards are priceless, at least most times. Leaders keep it honest and fair. Sometimes we're the referee though, I will tell you <laughs> that part comes in too. Again, that's like being a mom, right? Sometimes it's also our job to call you out. And I'll tell you, Krista and Carrie call me out sometime. And it's like, ouch, I feel it. <laughs> But we do, we have to be called out and you can't show like um, that you're so soft that you can't call someone out because sometimes we need it. And I'm yellow, so that's not always easy for me. But then when I get aggravated enough, then I think the red comes out a little bit and I will call people out. But I do it not to be mean, but to help, okay? So you're gonna have to know as a leader, even those, you have to choose your time, you choose your battles. And you know what, sometimes as a leader, someone may need to have a friend, have your shoulder. Sometimes you need someone to be a voice of reason and reminder of why you ever started this business. I bet every one of you have thought about quitting at one point or other. Then you need that leader that you can go to and trust and go, hey, you've obviously forgotten why you're here to begin with. Leaders come in all sizes and shapes, but they all have the same responsibilities to their teams. And we may all look different, but we all will probably lead differently too. But the same victory is what we're after. At the end, we want your success. And being that being success for the team as a whole and as each person individually. So you know what, it's not just one person, it's the whole team. We want everybody to be successful. 
I love a leader with a heart. I love a leader that's driven and can be fair-minded without prejudice. You know, we have to play that impartial side on occasion, but as leaders, we have to stay impartial. Leaders with a heart will always have a special love for their team, and that team will want to do all they can. And I want y'all to remember this. If you're really loved, your team will do all they can to earn your respect and your admiration. So you want to be that kind of leader. And last of all, and this is huge, and I thought it was interesting that uh, Carissa touched on this, Leaders do not take part in team negativity. And it needs to stop it ASAP. There's nothing good that comes from negativity in this business and it will grow like a cancer if it's not stopped. And in our type of business, there's no room for negativity at all. We all need to vent sometime and that's, we all do. You vent upline or you might even go vent to a sideline sister, but not your downline. And I've always said, it's okay to be frustrated, sad, even feeling negative, but you don't pay rent there. It's a one night stand and you need to move on. Nothing good ever comes from team negativity. Did you like that one? So those who are leaders and those in the making, be prepared because you are the one that will be looked up to. You are the one under the microscope and that's scary sometimes, but you're also the one that can be the biggest positive influencer in someone's life. And that's me. That's it. I'm done. That's my cue. That's your cue. Hey guys, Carrie Gabriel here. Today I'm going to talk to you about the six different kinds of distributors. Okay. When we sign somebody up, sometimes we go in not understanding that different personalities mean different things on our charts. And we wonder like why we sign people up and then they don't work. Or we wonder why some people sign up and then they skyrocket to the top and we just don't understand why. Well, I've got a list of the different kinds of distributors and what you can do to work with them and incentivize them. Okay, and if you do this and you understand that each person is different, then maybe this will help you hit your goals faster. At the very least, it will make you a lot less frustrated with people. I promise it will. Promise. Okay, so there's uh, six different kinds. The first person is somebody who just signs up for a discount. They're like a discount diva. Basically, they signed up because they wanted the loyal customer pricing but didn't want the auto ship. Okay, that's fine. That's totally fine to have people like that. They're gonna order sometimes. What you can do for them is just keep them informed of sales. Okay, that's volume. Volume is volume. What you don't do with them is put them in a ruby spot on your chart, a diamond spot on your chart, because that is not who they are. They're just there for the discounts. They're gonna be random orders, okay? So whenever we have specials, like when we have the join for $9.99, a lot of them were just the discount people. They really were, and people got frustrated because they didn't realize that. They thought they were building this massive team, but the discount people, they don't wanna work, okay? So 400 leg, that's what you do with them. Don't stress about it, just keep them updated, okay? Second one is the short timer, okay? So these people have like a specific goal in mind. Like they join just to be able to pay off a bill. They join to pay for their vacation. They join, maybe we had a, an incentive trip or something and they wanted to earn that like they just joined for a little specific goal that's it okay these people you also you don't want them as a diamond on your chart you don't you want to i mean they could be a ruby because until they hit that goal they're going to keep working hard they're they're going to like work hard from day one because they've got that goal in mind but once they hit that that's when it kind of all falls apart. Have you ever wondered why some people, like they're so strong, so strong, and then they're gone? That's why they were a short timer. And had you known this in the beginning and realized, oh, her goal is to pay for her vacation. Okay, maybe she's a short timer. Maybe I'm not gonna put her in a diamond spot, you know? Okay, so for short timers, keep them informed on how they can maximize their income and keep them informed of what's going on because you they could come back and like do great things because people can change. Number three is the part-timer, okay? These people, they just want to make part-time income. This is what 
most people are when they're joining. They want to make two to three hundred dollars a month. They don't care if they make more than that. This is not going to be their life's goal. Like that's all they want. It's just a couple hundred dollars a month. These people, they could be a ruby on your spot on your chart. They can be a four hundred box, but you're not going to put them in the diamond, the double, the triple spot. So seeing a part timer, you know, ruby spot or a four hundred leg, because these people, they're they're there sometimes. Okay, they're not the people that you see working every day. Okay, and that's fine because they're just gonna do it within their own time frame. So if you're having a contest, if it fits in their time frame, they're gonna work on it. If it doesn't, they don't care. Okay, then you're gonna get the career builders. This is what if you there's somebody crying. If you are a career builder. This is what you're looking for, other career builders. These are the people that are gonna work passionately, they're gonna build their downline, they're gonna create a ton of volume, they're gonna be there consistently, and they're always gonna be there. So these are the people you want as the diamonds, the doubles, the triples on your chart, the career builders, okay? Um, with those people, what you can do is help them grow their skills. Okay, just because somebody is good at something doesn't mean you just drop them and let them do their own thing. That It's the opposite, actually. You take them from good to better. Like, that's what you do. You help them with their skills set. Um, give them challenges. Give them incentives. These kind of things are highly motivated for the career builder. Okay? The social consultant. Um, this one, <laughs> you guys, we get these all the time. I'm willing to bet, I can't see who's on here, but I'm willing to bet there's at least three of them on right now, okay? These are the people that are just here to have friends. They're just here to do the social things. They're just here because they wanna be a part of something, okay? Those people are not typically going to be the diamonds, the double diamonds on your chart, but they're fine for a ruby. They're fine for a 400 lay. So if you know somebody is just there for the friendship and the fun, but not the freedom, then that's, that's going to be your social person, okay? They join for the community. Absolutely. That's all that they join for. So they don't, they're not going to care so much about contest, but what they're going to care about is going to team meetings, getting on Zooms. Like that's the stuff that they're going to thrive on. So if you want to help them, then get them involved in that stuff. They love recognition, that kind of thing. That it works for eternity. Well, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Okay, and then the last one is the socially conscious consultant. And this one's weird to me. I, I don't see a lot of these, but they believe in the mission and the value of the company and they stand behind it. So sometimes I do see these, um, but I don't really see them on our team. But they're the people that are like head to toe, it works. And they like are all into it and they love the products and they love talking about it, but they don't really work a business. Have you ever seen that? You're like, wow, you're like so passionate and so into it. And then you hear that they're an executive and they've been in for five years. And you're like, how is this? They're just, they're the socially conscious distributor. They care more about the company and the mission than actually building the business. Okay. And so knowing that will help you, will help you, help you, help you. Because they, they're their type for a reason but they have a lot of the words, but not a lot of the actions, okay? All right, so all of these groups, they're all different, there's six of them. They are all different, and some of them um, may seem like they'd be easier to work with than others, but what's really cool about it is they can all accidentally build a downline. They can. So if you see like your social consultant suddenly growing a team, that's where you need to jump in because they're not going to be able to mentor those people. They're not because they don't care about that stuff. So whenever you see your part-timer sign up a career builder, then jump in and help them with that because they're not going to be able to help them the way that you can. All right. So everybody can move up and down, you know, like a lot of career builders, they might turn into part-timers when something happens in their life, some traumatic life event or the opposite. Some traumatic life event might turn a part-timer into a career builder. That um, social consultant might lose their job and suddenly like they're like, 
you know what, maybe I should make money doing this, not just hang out with my friends. So people can change and they can move. But knowing this, all these different categories will help you save a lot of frustration. It's going to help you chart. It's going to help you build a stronger organization. So my challenge to you is to look at everybody on your team. Okay, you don't have to tell them like, hey, I'm gonna make you a social consultant. Like you don't have to do that. But look at everyone on your team and what figure out what category you think they fit in with and then use that knowledge to help incentivize them, to motivate them for in a way that they understand, in a way that they can work with. Okay, um, so finding out, because finding out what motivates these people is extremely valuable information. All right, so that's it. That's all I got. So thank you, Carissa. Thank you, Sherry. That was very good information about branding 101. So you want to be a leader and then the six types of consultants. So thank you. All right, guys, hang out for the after party if you are watching live. Everyone else just wave. Bye, guys. Wrong button. I almost booted everyone out.